around 150 kilometers west of Port Maputo, South Africa, the remains of a huge metropolis can be found. An ancient site measuring an astonishing 1,500 square kilometers in size, suspected by some to in fact once have been part of an even larger civilization, estimated by some to have been around 10,000 square kilometers in size, and constructed 160,000 to 200,000 years ago. The region is somewhat remote, and the stone circle remnants were only ever encountered by local farmers, who assumed they were made by some indigenous people within the past. Amazingly, or rather conveniently, modern archaeology has seemingly forgotten to investigate this amazing place. Fortunately, this all changed when researcher and author Michael Tellinger, in association with Johann Heiner, a local fireman and pilot who had actually been looking at these ancient ruins for years, decided to investigate. Heiner had the unique opportunity to see these incredible structures from the air and knew that their significance was undoubtedly not appreciated. Quote, when Johann first introduced me to the ancient stone ruins of southern Africa, he had no idea of the incredible discoveries we would make in the following years. The photographs, artifacts and evidence we accumulated all point towards a lost civilization that precede all others, not for a few hundred years or a few thousand, but many thousands of years." End quote. According to Tellinger, these discoveries are so incredible that they will require a complete paradigm shift in how we view our human history. Quote, I see myself as someone quite open-minded, but I admit that it took me over a year to figure it out, and I realize that we are actually dealing with the oldest structures ever built by man on Earth. We have been taught that no ancient civilization of significance ever existed within South Africa. Powerful civilizations all emerged in Sumeria and Egypt and other places, Michael Tellinger stated. Regardless of what certain individuals claim regarding the age and, indeed, size of this site, it is certainly of historical significance, going against all currently upheld understandings of the timelines regarding ancient civilizations within South Africa. As Dan Eden from ViewZone put it, quote, I would suggest that the Sumerian story was given as a base metaphor for actual ancient cataclysms that caused the diminished planetary resonance and a spiritual injury to the psychoacoustic field of human consciousness. He continued, The tablets of Sumer describe the Anunnaki as a race of extraterrestrial beings who enslaved humanity for the purpose of exploiting our gold for protective use in the atmosphere of their home planet. I understand the Sumerian mythology as a metaphor for the cataclysmic changes that occurred in the deep human past, which offset the psychoacoustic balance of human consciousness." End quote. The Lama Su. Incredible monuments, undoubtedly constructed during an incredible time within human history. Worshipped as celestial beings within ancient Mesopotamian religion, Often, they bear a human head and a bull's body, although variations exist which have the horns and the ears of a bull, including wings. These anthropomorphic statues appear frequently throughout Mesopotamian art, indicating a strong importance to their cultural beliefs. It is now understood that the Lama Su were perceived as household protective spirits within ancient Babylonian belief systems becoming associated later as royal protectors, which were placed as sentinels at entrances. The reason for our video, however, does not surround the religious importance or indeed cultural history of the Lama Su. Instead, we wish to explore the enormous, inexplicable size, and thus weight, of these incredible ancient statues. How did an ancient people that, according to academia, existed within our own well-studied cycle of development, accomplished the movement and placement of such gigantic stone carvings. If we look at the efforts of Henry Lenard, for example, made within 1847, you soon realize that the mammoth scale and as yet unexplained undertaking the placement of these masterfully decorated stones must have been. After discovering more than half a dozen pairs of these colossal statues, some depicting lions, some depicting bulls, often weighing up to 27 metric tons. Henry Lenard decided that he would attempt to bring two of these smaller artworks 
weighing in at a mere 10 tons each, to England. However, he found that after an 18-month, painstaking, torturous journey, which included several near disasters, just how incredible the placement of these monuments once were. He eventually succeeded in bringing them to a British museum. Although this involved loading them onto a wheeled cart, lowered with a complex system of pulleys and levers, operated by dozens of men. He initially tried to hook the cart up to a team of buffalo and have their brute natural strength haul the stones, although they refused to move. He then selected a reinforced cart for their transport, which required over 300 men to move it. This was soon realized to be far too hazardous. So he then wrestled with and opted for the decision to load them onto a barge. This required well over 600 goatskins and sheepskins just to keep it afloat. After eventually arriving in London, a custom-built ramp was constructed at great expense just to allow the crew of many hundreds of men to haul them up the steps and into the museum itself. An astonishing and clearly exhaustive exercise, which clearly demonstrates the civilization capable for constructing and placing these statues in their original positions were clearly far more capable than our recent ancestors placed a mere century ago. This dramatic sequence of events is clear indication that the national museums involved in the funding and transport of such exhibits, even back in 1847, were more than aware of the astonishing feats these monuments were, yet are seemingly committed to a conspiracy, which we believed is severely limited in accurate chronological events. Although claimed as Assyrian, dating back as far as the 25th century BC, these monuments, we feel, were clearly reused by this culture, possibly due to their astonishing size. Who carved the Lamassu? How did they move statues weighing nearly 30 tons? We feel that these monoliths were left by a lost, once highly capable, advanced civilization. And as such, we find them highly compelling. Bazda Cave, within modern-day Turkey, is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation, with select areas quarried out, subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns, strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking, thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites, some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number of remarkable precision-cut monuments, including a once-existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hiron. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hiron, in addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Bazda to yet more ancient ruins, all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies, tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites, Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India, the roof of a precision-cut cave, and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring, often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel-boring equipment. 
Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide, with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring, found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Bazda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Bazda cave to another similarly gigantic, artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Bazda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimrod's fortress on Mount Hermon with Jerash in Jordan, with us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now, those very same blocks, when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2,000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are 
whatever, three or more thousand years old, and of course they are built by some obscure unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the Royal Kurgan in Crimea to New Earth's discoveries, and now to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars, allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Coil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress, and the Royal Kurgan. Possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins, academically claimed to be of vastly different ages and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling.